I recently posted this picture on my Twitter and it set a people ablaze. This is the Steam Deck running Windows 11. Now there are a number of reasons you may want to do this, primarily playing games that you quite can't get yet, at least within SteamOS, such as Call of Duty, Fortnite, things like that. In fact, one of the main reasons I see people not buying the Steam Deck is because there's a particular game, a Windows only game, that people want to play on the deck. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. I'm going to show you the rather simple process it is to install Windows 11 on the SD card, pop it in, boot to Windows 11, as well as showing you the basic controller setup and then some of the uh, gaming performance that we get off of Windows on this machine. This video is sponsored by Kingwin. It's a great place to get Windows 11 keys, Microsoft Office, and a bunch of different games if you are interested. And I'll talk about them a little bit more when we get into the activation point of this version of Windows. So with that, let's jump on into the tutorial. And like I said, it is a rather basic process. The very first thing you're gonna want to do is one, make sure you have the appropriate things. I have the micro SD card in there, but for this I'm using a 256 gigabyte Samsung SD card. I do recommend that as kind of a minimum because games take up a lot of space. I'm going to be running through some of the steps and demos on this uh, 64 gig. Would recommend something bigger. You're going to need a way to plug the SD card into the computer. I am using this USB adapter right here. Usually using a USB adapter like this is going to be required to get Rufus to recommend it or to recognize it which is what we're gonna be using. So the first step, go to the Windows website under the media creation tool. You're gonna to want to download that, launch it. After you accept their terms of service, give your ISO a name and location, and this is going to download that for you. From there, you're gonna to want to go to the Rufus website, download that tool, and then plug in your USB adapter into your computer. It should recognize under the device section here. For boot selection, you're gonna to want to click select and click that ISO that you downloaded once that tool is complete downloading it. And then probably the most important part and what's really nice about Rufus is under image option, you're going to want to select Windows to go. What this is going to do is actually make the SD card the medium that you're going to boot from and not just a simple installation medium to install onto a different disk. For partition, scheme, target system, and all that stuff, you're going to want to leave basically everything at default. And when you click on start, here you're going to be able to pick your edition of Windows. I went with Windows 11 Home because that's the license I purchased click OK. You're going to get some extra options for the window to go thing. I do recommend just keep it all at default. It, there is an option to uh, make it so you can use an offline account. In my experience, that did not work. You're unfortunately going to have to sign into a Microsoft account to get this working. When you continue from there, it's going to give you a warning that all the data on this drive is going to be completely wiped. So do make sure that if there's anything important on the SD card, you do have it backed up prior to actually trying to do this. And then that process will begin. It will take a little while longer than most because it's an SD card and it's not that quick. Now, while you wait for this, you should go and pull all the drivers you're gonna be needing directly from Valve. There's gonna be a link to a website that looks like this. All the links there, you could give a single click and download the appropriate drivers. We can see here the APU driver is a, a rather recent update and that's gonna be really nice to go ahead and test out. There are some specific instructions for some of the drivers, but we're gonna be getting into that once we actually get into our system. Looking over at Rufus, once it is complete, what we're gonna to want to do is put the drivers on our SD card so we can access them pretty easily. For this, I just created a folder on my desktop called drivers drag and dropped all the downloads into that folder. And then just to save myself some uh, effort later on, go into that folder and I extracted all of the drivers into their own folders and then deleted all of the archives. From there, what you're gonna want to do is go into my computer, go into the device you just flashed. You just should see all your normal kind of Windows setup files there. Drag and drop that entire drivers folder onto the SD card so you can access it easily later. And now it is at this point that you can get your little SD card and pop it into your Steam Deck and you're gonna to want to boot into it. Now to do that with your Steam Deck completely powered off, you're gonna to want to hold down the volume down button and then do a single tap on the power button. Continue holding the volume down until you get to the boot screen, which will look like this. Go into your boot options and then select that SD card. Usually it will be the very last option. Now on this very first boot, it's going to take a long time to boot up. So just give it a little bit of time and then you'll be greeted with the standard kind of Windows setup screen. I'm not gonna bore you with all the exact steps through this. It's a standard Windows setup. Just go through, select your time, your date, 
your keyboard preferences, you're gonna to wanna to connect to Wi-Fi, eventually log into the Microsoft account. It's a whole process. Once you finish that process, it should reboot and it should automatically reboot into the SD card the first time. If it doesn't, you're gonna to have to repeat the uh, boot process to get into the SD card, but it should automatically put you into Windows, finish the setup process, and then you're good to go. Now, being in Windows, the very first thing you're gonna to want to do is make it so you don't have to have a keyboard plugged into it all the time. And there's actually a really easy setting to enable it so when you use the touch function so if you touch on an area in which you can type, it should automatically bring up the on-screen keyboard. And to do that, you're going to want to open up your settings, go to time and language, and then under typing, there's going to be an option that says touch keyboard. And the very last checkbox there says show the touch keyboard when there's no keyboard attached to make sure that is selected. And now whenever you touch an area, it will bring up the keyboard. And it's actually a pretty nice keyboard and there's some additional settings and stuff that you could play around here if you would like to. And now it's at this point that I'm actually going to activate the system using the key we got from Kingwin. I don't really want to pay Microsoft a full hundred dollars to activate my little Windows installation on the Steam Deck. On their homepage we can see a bunch of different deals for Windows 11, Windows 10, we have Last of Us, a bunch of different games. You can get discounts on Microsoft Office and really a whole lot more. They have a lot of packs, so if you want to get some related games and whatnot, you can save some money that way in addition to the discounts they already have. Just overall very competitive offers with the games I mentioned and other things like a Hogwarts Legacy. In this case, I wanted Windows 11 Home, so I added that to my cart, added the discount code TECH20, which will save an additional uh, 20% depending on the price it basically eliminated the service fees which was cool after I paid I got an email saying it was ready So I was able to log into the Kingwin dashboard under my inventory I had the Windows 11 key that I just purchased I clicked claim and then it displayed my key from there I again went to the settings and it says Windows not activated So I clicked activate now under change product key I clicked on change and I just typed in the exact same key that Kingwin gave me in the uh, inventory. Tap on next and then from there we tap on activate and in no time my copy of Windows was activated so I won't get that annoying watermark. So now it's activated, let's install the drivers and we made this pretty easy to access. You're just gonna wanna go to the file explorer, go to this PC and you'll see what looks like a USB plugged in there. That's actually your installation. Very first thing is the APU driver, open that folder, run the exe and go through the standard installation process. This is the one I actually restarted my system for because I wanted the drivers to go ahead and load up right away. And then when the system reboots, go back into that folder and begin installing all the other drivers. For the rest of the drivers, I decided to restart the computer later. And for some of these drivers, there's not gonna be an actual EXE installation thing. So you're gonna to need to go in, right click on that system information file, or it's gonna be the uh, L2 button in this case. Then you're gonna to want to select install, open, say yes and then the operation was successful. There's one other driver you're gonna to wanna to do this with and the rest are just basic EXEs. After the reboot and with all the drivers installed, I opened up Windows Update, started that scan so that can kinda of run in the background while we get our controller drivers set up. All the steps we're gonna need is gonna be on the GitHub page for the Steam Deck Windows User Mode drivers. Under how to install, you're gonna see a list of a bunch of different things to do. You're really gonna to wanna to pay attention to the first three we're gonna download and install the VGM bus driver. And for these, I just installed them right after downloading. After that one, we're gonna to want to install Microsoft Visual C++. And then finally download and install the Steam Windows controller driver. This is pretty straightforward. I just stuck with all the default installation settings. Make sure you leave everything checked and then generally you're good to go. And to see it's working, I opened up the Windows USB game controllers. We can see there's nothing there for now. But if we go ahead and open up our driver, we can then see that it is now recognizing as an Xbox 360 controller. Now, one thing I do recommend you doing is going down to the taskbar and opening up the preferences just by double clicking on the little driver icon there. Here we can see a lot of different information, but what we're going to want to do is go over to settings and ensure that start with windows and start minimize are both checked. And from there, you should be good to go. Just for giggles, I went ahead and restarted it just to make sure that it all boots up properly. And in my case, it did. So now we are ready with our Steam Deck to install some Windows games. Call of Duty usually hovered between the high 40s and low 50s, sometimes in the 60s or even the low 70s in low intensity situations. Playing this is when I realized the controller driver defaults are not perfect. 
pressing the B button to crouch also initiated the menu. It was definitely annoying, but nothing some minor customization shouldn't be able to fix. Basically, if this is the only game you're trying to play on Windows, it really is a good time. As for my personal use case, this is really the only Windows game that I actually want to play on the deck. Now, after trying out Call of Duty, the Steam Deck has been on a while downloading games, running updates, and more. There was some major lag when I was trying to interact with the Windows UI, so it seems that after running things off the SD card for hours, you'll need to reboot the system, otherwise it's going to really start falling behind. I went ahead and restarted the deck before opening the next game, which is Fortnite. This was the opposite when it comes to the performance, it was laggy, and I mean it was so bad, dropped frames were making it go as low as single digit numbers. I jumped into settings and dropped everything down to medium, and after that it was doing a little better, averaging in the 30s and even jumping into the 60s, but with the occasional stutter and dropped frames, overall just making it a really poor experience. If you want to play Fortnite on the go, I definitely recommend just playing it on your cell phone and getting a little controller like the Gamester one I checked out in a previous video. Sticking with the trend of Battle Royale games, we jumped into PUBG, another one of those Windows-only games as it is borked on ProtonDB. This was basically on par with Call of Duty as frame rates are smooth, but this game has a difficult time with the controller drivers. You can even see here the controls guide flipping back and forth between the keyboard and the actual controller buttons. There are even points in this game that I had to plug in a keyboard and mouse such as when I was giving myself a name or even during the tutorial when I needed to hold down the space bar, it would jump back and forth between the controller and keyboard, even when the keyboard wasn't plugged in, making it so I simply couldn't do that. One of the games I've been playing a lot lately, which actually works pretty good on SteamOS, I just decided to try it out on here, is Orcs Must Die 3, a Windows native game. And the performance is on par as it's locked in at about 60 frames per second, and the controller drivers and controls in general on this game were basically perfect as well as with Fall Guys, which ran phenomenally, controller worked perfect, and you could see the high frame rates overall, it was an absolutely perfect experience. So those are some of our Windows only games. Now one of the things I'm kind of interested in is how is performance Windows versus Linux? For this I used Apex Legends and both the games ran smooth with very similar frame rates, but running it on Linux took noticeably less CPU and just system resources in general. Obviously games for the Steam Deck work better in SteamOS when that is the option, but if you really have that one game that you want to play on the Steam Deck in Windows, it is definitely possible may take a little bit of tinkering to get working properly, but the Steam Deck ultimately is a pretty powerful machine and with the slightly lower resolution of the screen it can really push out some pretty good stuff. I wouldn't buy the Steam Deck to put Windows on, in my opinion that would be uh, kind of silly, but the option is definitely there and available if you do need that. So overall it's a pretty decent experience, it has its little things here and there you kind of have to work around, but if you're trying to play Call of Duty on your Steam Deck it is definitely possible, even off of something as simple as an SD card. I have a two terabyte hard drive in here, so it's not officially supported by Valve, but I am gonna be looking into actually dual booting this in the future, and I think that would be pretty cool, especially when it comes to the uh, disk speed performance. And if you personally have some additional tips and tricks just to make the overall experience better, please leave them down below in the comments as it will help me and uh, numerous other people out. And if there's a lot of them, I might make a whole separate video showing you how to optimize and improve this when it comes to the performance overall. With all that, anything I mentioned will be linked down below, including the GitHub pages, the Valve drivers, just about everything. Uh, with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day, and goodbye.